Welcome to Lost and Found No More Secrets with DNA Angels. We are a dedicated nonprofit organization helping people discover their biological roots through their DNA. Whether they are an NPE, not parent expected, donor conceived, adopted, or just searching, we're here to support you. Join us as we explore the importance of knowing where you come from because your sense of identity is much more important than someone else's secrets. Hello, welcome back to Lost and Found No More Secrets. My name is Heidi and I'm a genetic genealogist with DNA Angels and I have my co-host today, Laura Olmstead, who is our founder and executive director. Hi, Laura, how are you today? Hey girl, I am good. To be honest, I'm very tired. You wouldn't believe my week. I can imagine. I know you have your hands in a lot of different, putting out a lot of fires and yeah. a lot of different projects. It's been a busy week. Well, we have breaking news on a case. I've been working on a case for two and a half years and we finally solved it over the weekend. And this is an adoptee. Mom welcomed her with open arms um, and mom like got in touch with her right away that day and called her like four times the same day. Wow. It was incredible. I sent mom flowers. I saw your, uh, I said, because you couldn't celebrate the first time. Congratulations. It's a girl. That's sweet. I saw, angels. I saw your, uh, YouTube video that you had posted on Sunday and it just, I had to know the outcome of that case. Yeah. Isn't that so rewarding when it's been yes. two years and you're trying and trying and you, you yes. don't want to give up hope, but you just needed to come together. And when that, that moment that it comes together, I remember you were, your, your video yes. said you were calling the client, wake up wake up i have big news for you <laughs> she didn't get up till noon and we had me and the research team we were up until almost two in the morning um oh, and then we got back up at 6 30 in the morning hoping that she would be up early she wasn't and we were just twiddling our thumbs we were so antsy we were very emotional about this because we knew how bad that she really wanted mom i found dad two and a half years ago uh -huh. she really wanted mom and look, we went all the way to Cape Verde. Um, it, it was Portugal at the time. It's West Africa now. Cape Verde, Africa to find mom. Wow. So mom was from Puerto Rico, um, but her ancestors were from Cape Verde. And you don't you you in order to find mom, you've got to find her ancestors. So it, it took a, <clears throat> a third cousin to finally seal it. We only had like five matches on that side of the family in Cape Verde because nobody tests right and they were really low well over a hundred or well under a hundred Cinnamorgans which is fourth and fifth cousins but it was the 113 that actually brought it together and she had not responded to our our call to action when we emailed her she never responded she finally responded and that's how we were able to finally put it all together so I'm just really happy about that and I think I'm still living on the adrenaline of that solve right now. We really get involved. I mean, I was very personally involved in this case. So who was the one to call mom? Was it you or the client? It was me. It was you. She couldn't do it. She's like, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't think I can do it. So I actually didn't call her. She had Facebook. So I said, let me just reach out to her on Facebook. Just, in, just real quick instead of calling. Cause you know, it's nerve wracking to call for me too. Um, yeah. We do have liaison services, just so you know, we do offer to be your liaison. Um, and so I did that for her. Uh, and <clears throat> mom immediately responded right away to the questions I was asking. I didn't just rush right out and say, are you, did you have a baby and place it for adoption? I said, I want to make sure, or hi, Annie, I, um, I am so glad that you responded. I just want to verify I got the right Annie after I introduced myself. I, I said I was a genetic genealogist. Um, I said, are your parents X, Y, Z? And she said, yes. And I said, oh, I'm so happy to have finally found you. And then I said, I work with adoptees and I've got a young lady that was born X, Y, Z in this state. Does that ring any bells to you? And she's like, 
it does, but it was two days later. And I'm like, mm, okay, what do you mean? She's like, I gave birth. And so she just like came right out and said it um, two days later. So her birth certificate was wrong. Oh, wow. Her birthday wasn't on the 24th. It was on the 26th. Hmm. And I'm like, okay. Cause she's like, can I see the birth certificate? And I'm like, you betcha. Because um, in New York, the uh, adoption records are open now. So it, they will give you your original birth certificate and it had mom's name on it. It was, a um, but that's like looking, it was a real common name. It was like looking for a Susan Smith. You're just never going to find it. Um, and so I showed her and she's like, yeah, she was born two days later. She's like, I will never forget that day. I, I don't forget the day. So yeah, it was, it was just wonderful, but we're here to talk about Tabitha. Yeah. Let's talk about Tabitha. So Tabitha, she's not adopted. Um, she, her mother was very young when she was born and she was raised primarily by her grandparents and she had a little bit information about her biological father, but nothing really concrete, concrete. She didn't have the best matches. And so she came to us in 2022 and we were able to, able to solve her case. Would you like to bring Tabitha onto the show? I sure will. Let's do it. Hi. Hi, Tabitha. Hello. How are you? Oh, I am very, very good. Thank you. Very blessed to be here. Thank you. I I'm so happy that you agreed to be a guest on our show. We want to just get into your story. Tell us a little bit about your about your background and what it was like growing up for you. Um, for me, the the growing up, the first forty years uh, were very hard. <laughs> uh, there was a a lot of turmoil. I, my mother was very young. She had a lot of um, a lot of addictive issues. And so my grandparents primarily raised me, but I did spend um, about the first 18 months of my life back bouncing between her and my grandparents, as well as foster care. So there was there was kind of a lot that went on there. Um, when I was about four, five years old, my first stepfather passed away very suddenly and unexpectedly, and I knew him as my dad. Um, and when, you know, after he had passed and we would go to a, we went to a family function, I had an aunt introduce me as his stepdaughter. So you can imagine as a, you know, five, six year old child, that's kind of a kind of a hard word to hear because I knew what that meant, but I wasn't I wasn't sure why she was saying that. So a little while later, I asked my mom, well, my aunt had, had shared that with her and I asked her about, you know, why would they say that? And she proceeded to tell me about a young man that she had had a one-time acquaintance with and said that, you know, she knew he was my dad. I looked just like him. She gave me some details, said, you know, he played guitar in a country rock band. I, you know, blonde hair, green eyes. Um, he flew airplanes, just, just little clips and pieces. She did share a name and she shared where he went to high school. And she's like, well, you need him. well, yeah, that was, that was a big thing, but I was, I was seven. <laughs> That's a lot of information to take on a, a seven-year-old, but right. she was, you know, at, at that stage in her life, she was, you know, having fun, 25 year old girl herself. So she just like, pardon the expression, but like word vomited everything on me at one time. Um, so she asked if I wanted to meet him and because of the relationship and because of the situation and everything. And I was a little girl. I was like, nope, mm -mm, nope, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but the name always stuck with me and they stayed in the back of my head um, that one day I probably would. And I thought, hey, it's really cool. I was, I've was i always loved, loved music. And oh my goodness, is he a rock star? Is he this or that or all the other things? Because I, you know, all the, you know, the music pipe dreams are in my head, right? And then about the, the airplanes, as I grew up, I was always fascinated by that, but I'd never fly because I was scared of heights, just all the, all the crazy things. But he was always in the back of my head. Um, fast forward to when I was turning 40, I, um, 
celebrated 40 days of 40. And within that time, I had reached out to him. I found his, his name on Facebook, pretty, looked pretty similar. You know, we, we had the same cheeks. I saw that he played guitar. I saw that he flew airplanes, but he was like, he was in Oregon. He was in Alaska. He was, you know, traveling the world. And I'm like, that's no one that my mother (laughs) would be associated with at all. So I thought, um, but I, I reached out on Facebook and never got a reply. Well, okay. You know, life happened. Things are going well, move forward. Um, just continued the the living and growing and, and healing process from a lot of things. And in 2022, I had been kicking around the idea of, of doing the ancestry. And it's something that my kids are very familiar with. They had always teased and, oh, come on, do it with me, do it with me. My son had, my oldest son had done the 23 and me. And he was like, oh, it's the coolest thing ever. You find out this and this and this. I'm like, all right. Well, I, I, I didn't do it. Well, for um, my son's, my youngest son's 21st birthday, he's like, hey, mom, come on, let's, let's just do it together. You know, he's like, I go, you go. I'm like, oh. that's, that's the one way my, my kids always had me, no matter what it was. It's like, okay, you go, I go. So we did. Um, he wanted to do it for his birthday because he's in the military. He was going to be home over that time. Well, on my birthday, uh, Amazon was having a sale to DNA kits for the price of one. I was like, okay, here you go, kid. I'll buy it for my birthday. We'll do it for yours. So my birthday was on July 12th. His birthday was July 25th. We did the testing on July 26th. So boom, 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 all into place. We got, I got um, the, the ancestry results really quick, but there was no kind of d- defining clues there. Um, so I didn't really have anywhere to go. Well, the young lady who told me about the sale on Amazon um, was also a client at one point of DNA Angels. And she's like, hey, I know this place. They can probably help you. So I reached out and um, was given an advocate and was told, you know, hey, we're volunteers. It may take quite a while, you know, all the things. I'm like, well, you know, okay, I've at least I've started the ball rolling. I've I've pacified, you know, some of my curiosity. I've pacified my son's curiosity. So we were we were good. August 29th. I received a message from my advocate and, you know, we were just kind of bannering back and forth. She asked a few questions and she asked if either one of my parents went to Windsor High School. And I said, well, yes. You know, my my mother told me that my biological dad went there and I provided his name and she sent me the Facebook profile picture of the gentleman who I had reached out to a few years earlier. So, so you had the right guy, but he just hadn't read your messages. Right. 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 So she sent um, the Facebook profile picture. And then she also sent a picture of him from, he was, I believe 12 years old, which I've, I've sent over. And I was like, Oh my goodness. You know, cause that it's a lot to take in just in that quick moment, you know, wow. and, I went back and I looked at your your room before this recording. You look uh-huh. so much <laughs> like him. The twelve yeah. year old picture that she oh, sent over. Like I know he and age has needed that you <laughs> are definitely his, his daughter. Isn't that funny? Uh-huh. So so yeah. I mean the the twelve year old me and him look almost identical, which is just hilarious. So, um, she sent over contact information and it it was it was very overwhelming i wasn't sure you know where to go with it i was excited but i was also very scared because of a lot of the the rejection and stuff as as a little person but i was also angry i could not get over how angry i was 
because I, I think the, the biggest part of the anger was the, the not knowing, you know, not knowing his side of the story. I wasn't able to get any information from my mom. My mom's been passed away now for about 14 years. Mm-hmm. So I, I wasn't able to, I didn't get any additional input from her. Um, so it, 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 was, it was a lot and trying to process all of those emotions in, in you know, a short period of time was, was harsh. But I have an amazing support group. I got online and was texting with my girls immediately, you know, my girlfriends from from high school and junior high who grew up and knew the story with me. And, you know, they were they were talking me down and cheering me on and just just all the things. So it was really awesome. And a few days later, my my husband, who is very much my my biggest supporter, my biggest advocate, was like, you have got to reach out to this man because you're driving me crazy. You know, I love you, but we need, we need to do this and we need to do this now. And he was very close. Um, so my dad, his name is Bill. He lives very close to the areas that I kind of grew up in. I bounced between like three or four areas here in, in St. Louis. And he was at almost any point within 15 miles of me. Wow. where where his home home is so my husband went down to his home and put a letter on his door because i mean we knew right where the house was we we ride motorcycles we participate in in a lot of fundraising stuff and we we are down in that area fairly often he's like i know right where that's at so he went and he put a note on the door and you know said hey you know this is my wife. You know, we, she did, he was mistaken. He's like, she did the 23 and me. You've got a daughter. If, you know, if you want to contact her, this is her, her number. If you don't want to contact her, don't say anything. Text me only. So you didn't know. You didn't know that he did that. Uh, No, no. (laughs) He went out out riding his motorcycle on a Saturday morning. He's like, oh, hey, I love you. I'll be back in a little while. I just need to go catch some air. I'm like, okay, great. No worries. Well, then he sends me a picture of a note and is like, so I reached out to your dad for you. I was like, okay. (laughs) So then I had another come apart. (laughs) (laughs) But um but he got home and, you know, things, things were kind of quiet for a few days. And then text message, text messages started coming to him and, you know, asking some questions about my, my mother, asking some questions about me. And it turned out that it was my, who I know now is my stepmom, um, was reaching out to him to find out, Hey, you know, how old is she? <laughs> You know, because, you know, they've, they've been married for about 14 years, 13, 14 years at that point. You know, as long as she's older than this, we're good, you know. And, <laughs> so um, well, if you have a husband, I'm going to assume you're older than that. <laughs> right. Right. So it was, you know, um, they they went back and forth. She told him where my dad would be playing his his, um, his music over the next few weeks and invited us down anytime. So we made a made an effort to go out there and to try to meet him, but that night his band had canceled. <laughs> so oh, no. it's like, uh, okay, kick kick the can down a little further. So this whole process is is going on for weeks, but we did finally meet. Um, it was the second week of October of twenty two. I went down to see him play and walked in and. I think he had some idea, but it, it, it was very awkward. He's he's about kind of silly, shy, and awkward as as I am at times. So you know, we were we were standing around talking, and he looks at me. He says, "Well, you sure look familiar." <laughs> what did you say? You hadn't talked to him on the phone or anything. This was like no, a surprise this, visit. This was this was like. He was he was he was up on stage when we got there. He was he was playing. I just I walked in with my husband right behind me, and my stepmom Debbie was sitting at the table, and she recognized me instantly because she was like all over Facebook and trying to find all the things. <laughs> and um, so she came up and gave me a big hug, and then with that, it's like 
a whole crowd, you know, they had a bunch of their friends were there to see him play, of course. And, you know, we didn't really get into all the details of who I was. They just right. knew that, you know, I, I was possibly family coming to visit. Right. So um, the end of the night came and I was like, you know, I, I'd, I'd really just like a little bit of time with you. And um, he's like, that'd be great. Anytime he reached out to me the next day and we met two days later and had lunch and we get together about once a week since. That's, That's amazing. awesome. Tell me about the first lunch. How did that go? How nervous were you? Oh, it was, it, yeah, it was very nerve wracking <laughs> because well, I like couldn't really eat. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was more just talking for about an hour. I was on, I was on lunch from work and he was on his way home. He works overnights at the airport. So he was actually on his way home. So he hadn't been asleep at all and he was anxious. So, but we had a really good chat and, um, he, he doesn't recall my mom. He doesn't recall that, which I told him, you know, that's fine. He does hold, and we've, we've had some really good conversations about it. He does hold quite a bit of guilt for not being there, you know, and we send little pictures of things back and forth. And, you know, I, I wish I was there to see my baby girl at this time and, and that, which is, is is very sweet and we we've done some things together to just kind of recreate fun memories you know which has been awesome um he took me up in his airplane um he used to do air acrobats and stuff at the vp fair here in st louis and uh, i got to go up and do barrel rolls and do a giant flip in the air and all of that so that was that was really a fun fun thing so we, we've, we've had a lot of really great experiences. We've had to have some of the tough conversations, um, but it was, it's, it's been so, so worth it. So worth it. You know, the, the stepmoms being involved makes all the difference in the world. If they yes. get, to, if they get the green light from the stepmom, things go yeah. so much more smoother. Yeah. yeah. Just the, the love and support of the whole family has just been awesome. All their friends, Everyone has just kind of embraced my husband and I with open arms. My my sons, you know, my sons reach out and call them and call them Grandpa Bill. And it's Aww. just, it's it's been a really great experience. Do you have any siblings? That's what I was going to say. Does he have any I other do. siblings? Um, so not, he was still quite young when he got married for the first time and she had two children. So he adopted them and then they also had two. So I have four younger brothers from him. And then I have three, three other siblings from my mother. So yeah. It's a big family. I'm, big family. I'm the oldest of eight. <laughs> wow. Now, who was your angel? We always try to recognize who your, your, volunteer advocate was Ramona we call them search angel we're, we're called search angels or genetic genealogists awesome. Ramona Ramona oh yes Ramona's not with us anymore but we yeah. love her absolutely she was love her. super sweet and so fast yeah, and I, I, yeah. you know it was it was really cool and I just I, I want to share this part I've I've written about it too it's it's all about the timing you know and I, and I really, really believe that. Um, I mentioned m doing this for my son's birthday. His birthday was July 25th. Finding out after the fact, my dad's birthday is July 26th. That was the day that we did the test. Wow. I received the message from Ramona on August 29th. So very, very quickly. I mean, she was like, boom, boom on it. August 30th was my mother's birthday. Wow. So, I mean, it would just, it just really all, all fell into place and in just a really beautiful timing. So, yeah. and to bring my other son and my stepmom into it as well, my oldest son's birthday is June 25th and her birthday is June 26th. Wow. So, my oldest son, her, I'm in the middle, then <laughs> my youngest son and my dad all within four weeks. Wow. wow. What do you, what do you share in common with Bill? Besides oh. being, you said, uh, 
awkward what was the word you used besides that what other common things do you oh uh, just silly kind of awkward oh um the love of music and just the the, the kind-heartedness and the the peacefulness you know mm-hmm. both of us are very much kind of take life not overly seriously and just walk through things now pretty much anybody who has met me through him like that have known him for years and years and are like this is so weird we um we went on vacation back in may we did a family vacation together up in oregon so i could meet some of his friends that he had when he lived up there and I was sitting across the dinner table from the uh, one friend who's known him probably close to 20, 25 years. And he just kept looking at me. He's like, this is the weirdest damn thing. He's like, (laughs) I just, I, he's like, it's like Bill is a girl. It's just weird. (laughs) And then there's a, a, another friend that um, he's, he's been friends with since the time, you know, around the time that I was, brought around and um he he just kind of every time that that dad and i are together he just shakes his head he's like oh it's like seeing him all over again (laughs) so that's 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 neat it makes me feel good because i always i always felt like the odd person i was all the always the odd one out you know of my the siblings that i i did grow up around with my mom they were all dark haired and dark complected and you know just a very different personality, very different mindset, very different, you know, angst and attitude about a lot of things. And I just, I was never that way. And now I see, I see where I got it from. What is your relationship like with his other children? Um, we've, we, well, we've met, I've met once the, the two biological boys. Um, they're grown and flown and out and doing their own thing. Um, they don't live terribly close, but I send them a text message every now and then. I wish them happy birthday. And like I said, I've, I've met each of them once, but there's not a, not a strong bond there. Do you spend Thanksgiving, Christmas? You've had a few years with him now. Are y'all getting together for those important holidays and creating memories? Yeah, we have done each Thanksgiving and each Christmas together. We actually go to church now. Um, We started doing that last Christmas. They found a church that they really enjoy. So my husband and I went down and did Christmas service there and we've been there since. So that was that was nice. Uh, Birthdays, just big, big family gatherings. It's yeah, that's awesome. We're so happy for you. Oh, this has been such an amazing blessing and I am so grateful for for the organization and everything that you all do and listening to that story that that you were telling before you you introduced me oh my goodness my heart was just fluttering because I couldn't imagine waiting that long you know I most thankfully most clients don't have to but knowing knowing the blessings and knowing everything on the other side and hearing that the other that that the family was, or that the mom was just like so open. That was awesome was. because yeah. since I've shared my story, um, I've, I've had a number of people reach out to me where they've had similar situations and it did not go well. Yep. You know, the, the, the significant other wife, husband, whatever it was, didn't want another person in the picture. Yep. One young lady, her her sister was used to being an only child and had a fit. Yep. And if you know, I I can't I can't understand being that way, but it it's it happens and yeah. it's sad and it's unfortunate. But I mean, it's so I'm so grateful that you all do what you do and share this experience with with so many people because it it can truly just be a blessing. And for those that it's kind of just a lesson, I, you know, I really pray that they, they find peace in it Yes, you know, because they're here for a reason, you know, right. they're here for a reason. We do counsel people uh, when it's, when they're at that step where they're reaching out and maybe the bio parent is not receptive. We do tell our clients that 
although you are entitled to your biological truth, you are not entitled to a relationship. And as yeah. hard of a pill that is to swallow, it's the truth. Yeah. And, they're, and, and they should have no shame. You know, they're, they're the innocent party here. Mm -hmm. But what are you going to say, Laura? Well, what I was going to say is it really is not a reflection on you either. It's not like you've been rejected. It's a reflection on them as, as a human right. being, you know, that they're not, they're not receptive to something like that. And, you know, there are many different reasons why they may not be receptive. Um, but frankly, I can't imagine not being receptive. So it's kind of right. like politics and, and blue versus red. I can't imagine why someone does something this way and they can't imagine why I do something this way. Um, right. So we just have to kind of accept it and be thankful for, you know, the things that we do have. We have, you know, hopefully a little bit of mo medical information based off of death certificates of the ancestors. We know who our ancestors are, where we come from, where we may have gotten a certain feature if we were lucky enough to have photos. Um, so, I, that's kind of how I just try and, and coach my clients that get rejected. You know, you know, I was telling you about that wonderful adoption story where mom, you know, opened her son or her daughter with open arms. Well, the same week. And I mean, we just run a roller coaster of, of, <laughs> of emotions on behalf of our clients. The same week, last week, I worked with another adoptee, um, a man, and... I reached out to his mom. There was no response. I left a message on her husband's voicemail because I couldn't find her number. And then I called her sister and her sister says this, that's a private family matter. Cause I was trying to get the sister to confirm that her, that her sister placed the baby. Uh, and she said, that's a private family matter. And I said, well, can I at least get some updated medical information? The adoption agency didn't provide the, the family with any. And she says, no, we, we don't want to have any contact. And I'm like, okay. So I was really disappointed in that. So what I did was I reached out to the half sibling. So the, bi the biological mother's natural children, but I gave it about a week. Mom didn't reach back out. So I said, mom's had her chance. So now I'm going to go to my, my client's siblings, half siblings. And the very first thing that, that the daughter said when I told her about, um, the adoption and that she has a brother is she says, tell him I love him. Aww, like so that was her immediate reaction. Tell him I love him. Um, and then the next morning <laughs> 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 while I was asleep uh, and my voice, my, my phone was turned off. I turned it back on and uh, I had a voicemail from, from biological mom and she was not pleased uh, that I told her daughter uh, she she told me I did not have her permission to talk to her children, and I'm like, oh, they're grown adults, so I don't need your permission. But I didn't I didn't even call her back. But yeah. I update I have an update on that. Mom is starting to come around. Mom kind of reverted back to that 17 year old mm -hmm. child that was placing that baby for adoption that was kind of caught out with without having any resources. I think it was and probably was scary worried. for her too. Yes. Yeah, so she was worried about judgment, you know, oh, she exactly. never told her children that she placed a baby and it took her 15 more years to have a baby. So, I mean, she was 17, waited 15 years to have another child. So she never told those children about right. their baby bro brother that was, you know, born 17 years earlier. So everybody was kind of gobsmacked. Um, but I can tell you that the the sister to that that client has reached out to him every single day. She's being very supportive. She's kind of loving him through it. Um, and I I just have been telling him, and he's not impatient. I'm I'm just like you're doing great. Just go with grace. Have some patience. I think mom's going to come around. You know, we just won't push her. And he's like, I'm not going to push her. She can, mm -hmm. she. I'm here when she wants to come around. I'm like, that's and that's the awesome. Way Cause and, and people do change. I mean, it's, it's part of the, it's, it's part of the healing process. Yeah. You know, they, you know what, you know, and you walk through it. Yep. Exactly. That's exactly. Awesome. So Tabitha, tell me what, what, what is your advice to somebody that you find in the same situation as you? You've taken the DNA test, you get your results, you're overwhelmed. 
don't know what your next step is going to be. And then when you get your results and you have a name and reaching out and you're scared to death, what advice do you have? Just breathe through it and keep moving. You know, if they reject you, it's, it's on them, but if they don't, Oh, it can be just the most beautiful life altering experience. And if you need anyone to step through it with you, call me. If I'm not available in that moment, I know people, <laughs> you know, and I, I'm meeting and learning more people, more people every day. Yeah. Um, so it's, it is, it's a big family because it, it's, it's yeah. that common thread that ties so many people together of, you know, not knowing or knowing something not correctly yeah. and just, just keep walking through it. And you, there are tons of people out there that can support you. Right. That's great advice. It reminds me, I have a client that I, I solved her case and her father actually was married when she was conceived. So she's really, her biological father has passed, but she's really, really nervous about reaching out to her half siblings. And we actually have what's called a buddy program. So if you are scared to death to reach out, I think of a client that I've solved in the past that has a similar story and I connect the two. I put them in a room together and I say, y'all are connected, have at it. I leave the room. And so I let those two clients of mine, you know, just to have that, to, to have that support from somebody that's already walked through it is huge. That's awesome. So, that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But your buddy's not there to call for you. No, no. She actually, actually, this this client um, is using our liaison service, and Robin uh, called the half brother and happy. He's willing yeah. to do DNA test. It's all. He's yeah. not surprised that he had a, a half sibling out there, and so it's it's ended ended up being a good ending. That that just happened that's yesterday, by the way. But that's awesome. That's yeah, right. my buddy likes to to kick the little birdie out of the nest. It's how my husband refers to it. He's like, oh, if if you're scared, just jump here. I'll help you. <laughs> That's awesome. Right. Well, thank you, Tabitha, for joining our show. We really appreciate oh, uh, you, you so being much. raw and real. I know it's not easy to come on here and tell a bunch of strangers your story, but you did a fantastic job at it. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I, I just love and appreciate all the support and I am so very grateful for, for you all and, and this organization. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. You as well. What a great storyteller. What a beautiful story. I love it when our clients come on and they can just really, it was, it was. She was yeah. a great storyteller too. I was just enthralled. I was just sitting here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> nodding her head. Uh -huh. And before I could even think of the question, she was answering it. Yeah, right, yeah. God. She didn't need it. She didn't That's need gonna, a lot. It's of going to be a wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, she didn't. Nope, I agree. That's great. That's absolutely fantastic. So let me tell you, we had a few more minutes. Let me tell you about what happened to me last night on a case that I'm working with. So I get this case and when I first glance at it, I thought, okay, this looks like it's going to be a pretty straightforward case. But then you start doing your digging, doing some digging. And I found the great grandparents and great grandma had 21 kids by the time she was 41 years old. My God. Could you imagine? Oh my God. And I actually went to newspapers.com and I found an article. She'd had so many kids that the town in Ohio that she lives in did a whole article on her. If I hadn't <laughs> found that article, I would not have solved the case because in that article, they listed every single 21 of the kids' names because oh. a lot of them were born after the 50 census. Right. Well, I didn't know all 21 kids. Oh, that makes total sense. All right. And my, my top match was the first cousin once removed. So I had to go through each 21 of those or 20 of those siblings oh, to that's find painful. the conversion. And then the conversion, my, uh, the, the grandpa line was real low matches in the low hundreds. Yeah. And so it took a while, but man, when I saw that 
that last name that you know you look for those last names and the conversion of the grandparent networks and i don't think it was about 11 o'clock last night i saw that the two lines merge and i was like yes I so tip sleep, sleep well tonight <laughs> tip if you have a grandpa's line and you have low matches to that line whether it be grandpa or grandma whatever the situation is uh -huh. and you've got 21 kids um if you're not finding it right away, look for a small family or a recently immigrated family. That might help you narrow down the spouses yeah. to this find that grandma. small family. This the grand was the it? Yeah. Was a small family. But yeah. my top match was in the low hundreds. Yeah. So, you know, it's so I just decided to go through the 21 kids and it finally I think I got to daughter number 17 or something like that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> did you have a research assistant to help you? No, no, I table? didn't. I didn't. But I was in the research. So we have a we have a great team of researchers, and we have a room that when we have it, I couldn't find any old bits, of course, but we have a room that we can go to. And I went to the research room, and Chris, one of our yes. re researchers, came in with the with the old bit that saved the day. But anyway, I thought that was really could just I would just That's kept thinking awesome. myself. I mean, twenty one kids. How do you? Feed them all. How do you, where did they all sleep? <laughs> I don't know. My grandma had 14 and I know how they fed those kids. So I, I just can't oh, even imagine. Pretty so grand, grandma used to say that grandpa would stop every night at the, the butcher and get one of them five pound blocks of bologna. And that's how they would, that's what they would have for dinner was a big thick slice of bologna. Oh, wow. Or they would fish would during so the day. Tired. I would get so tired of that. <laughs> oh, God. Me too. And fish. They lived right on the river in like a little uh -huh. shanty. And uh, so they would fish right down the bank and, and, and eat that. But you can only eat so much dirty catfish, Ugh. you know, but like hey, they made it. Like eat them. <laughs> yep. They made it. It's pretty incredible though. I, I just can't imagine. We'll have to get you a hand massage from click, click, click. <laughs> click, 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 click. <laughs> That's exactly what I need. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. So I thought I'd share that. That's awesome. Thanks is for it? sharing. Yeah. Well, I think this is going to conclude our episode. We're at our at a time. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, like, and comment. We'd really appreciate it. And we will see you back next Thursday. Yep. Every Thursday at noon. All right, guys. Be blessed. See you next Thursday. <laughs>